about to tee off. In second place, Frazier's going to need some extraordinary play to move ahead. Ooh, that is not the shot that Frazier wanted. Could it be the pressure? Could it be just a lack of experience? Could it be... You. Me? Sports Figures puts your brain in the game. Golf's a drag. Now, I'm not just talking about how frustrating it can be. I'm talking about physics. The physics of drag. A golf ball's a beautiful thing. Perfectly round, cute little dimples, striking in its simplicity. But did you know a golf ball's actually a pretty sophisticated piece of aeronautical design that it took hundreds of years to arrive at the modern golf ball? Originally, golf balls were made of wood. Then in the 17th century, they came out with leather balls stuffed with feathers. Ah! It worked okay. Sort of. Then in 1908, around the same time that the Wright brothers were figuring out how to make an airplane fly, an American by the name of James Haskell was figuring out how to make a golf ball fly. What Haskell did is add the dimples. Now, if you don't think that's as important as what the Wright brothers did, well, you obviously don't play golf. Haskell's dimples have a lot to do with why golf ball hooks and slices. So why'd he do it? Was he trying to make golf even more frustrating than it already is? The reason is this. You can thank Haskell for that, because his dimples make a golf ball go way farther. So how come they also make a ball hook and slice, which you don't want? And sometimes they make a golf ball sail way far down the fairway. Which you do want. To help us figure it out, we have Harrison Frazier. <laughs> Harrison just qualified for the PGA Tour after being one of the top money winners on last year's Nike Tour. He was an All-American in college and last year won the Nike South Carolina Classic. So I'd say he knows a thing or two about hooks and slices. And long drives. So Harrison, you're a professional golfer. That's a pretty cool job. Yeah, it's not bad. We get to travel around all over the country and uh, you know meet a lot of people and get to be outside. That's the main thing. Uh, I didn't want to sit behind a desk all my life. Is there like a job application to become a professional golfer? Basically, all the guys that play professionally played, uh, you know, either for junior national teams or junior tournaments or junior circuit, and then they go to college and they play in college and the amateur circuits for a while. Most guys that play professionally have been playing for you know, anywhere from eight to ten years before they ever get out there. The first step to understanding how a golf ball works is understanding drag. Drag is like when something slows you down. Right. Any projectile moving quickly through a liquid or a gas experiences form drag. Now, don't try this at home. I'm a trained professional operating under controlled conditions. Now, when you're not moving, you don't really feel the air around you. Even as we start to move slowly, I still don't really feel much of anything. And when we get going, we reach a speed where we start to feel the air around us. I can really feel it. It's really pressing against me. So what does that mean? When an object, like a golf ball, is moving slowly through the air, the air it passes through slides along its sides and comes back together behind it. The air on both sides is the same pressure. Simple, right? But as the golf ball starts going faster, something different happens. The air can no longer hug the shape of the ball, and it gets deflected off the surface. It's like when you're in a boat. Traveling slowly, there's practically no wave. The water slips smoothly around the boat. But speed it up and the water can't hug the sides of the boat anymore and you get a wave. This turbulent weight creates a pocket behind the ball with a lower air pressure. The air pressure is now greater in front of the ball than behind it. Higher pressure always exerts a force toward lower pressure. In this case, pushing against the direction we want the ball to travel in. I didn't really feel the air until it started deflecting off of me. When it did, I could feel an area of low pressure back here and an area of high pressure in front. That difference in pressure is form drag. You can think of form drag kind of like something's shape, its form, is creating a drag. That's no good, right? We want the ball to go as far as possible, and that drag is slowing it down. 
Enter the dimple. Wind tunnel studies show something you might not expect from form drag. If the air all around the surface of the ball becomes turbulent, the passing air can actually hug the shape of the ball better, resulting in less turbulent wake and less difference in air pressure. It's the same for the fuzz on a tennis ball or the seams on a baseball. They actually have less drag than if their surfaces were smooth. <coughs> golf is just jam-packed with great inventions. You have the dimpled golf ball, alloy club shafts, <laughs> the golf cart. But I think this has to be the greatest invention of all, the golf ball picker-upper car. So do you know who invented this thing? No. So do you think people intentionally try and hit the car? Oh, definitely. Why do you think that they would want to hit the car? Oh, because it's more fun to hit a moving target with somebody in it. So you don't think it's anything you do personally? No. So now we know that dimples reduce form drag by creating turbulence around the ball, but it's only half the story. What haven't we taken into account with our golf ball? When a golf ball travels through the air, it's spinning. And the dimples have something to do with the spin? What the dimples have to do with the spin is they make the golf ball fly, just like an airplane. No way. Way? The spin is what controls a golf ball. And, and what creates spin is the golf club itself. What happens when a golf ball hits a club is it actually slides up the club face slightly before it comes off. And the grooves are what hold the ball on the club face and create spin. When you can make as square a connection as possible with the golf club and the ball, creating a true backspin without right to left or left to right movement on it, therefore the ball is going to fly straightest and the farthest. If we were to measure the speed of one dimple on the surface of a golf ball at 4,000 RPM, it would be going 30 miles per hour. It's that spin that causes it to fly. That's called the Magnus effect, because this guy Gustav Magnus studied the effects of air on a spinning object. The Magnus effect works because of that same boundary layer of air we looked at in form drag. If a golf ball is traveling in this direction, the air passing it is flowing in this direction. The spinning surface of the ball offers less resistance to the air here, where its surface spins with the flow of air, and more resistance to the air here, where it spins against the air flow. Air moving more quickly over one side of the ball and slower over the other side of the ball. So what do we know about air when it's moving faster and slower? Isn't that the Bernoulli principle, like how an airplane wing works? Right. Bernoulli said that the faster a liquid or gas moves, the lower its pressure. And so what happens with the change in pressure? Well, the higher pressure exerts force in the direction of the lower pressure. Because there's slower moving air on one side of the ball, there's also a higher air pressure on that side of the ball. It exerts a force toward the area of low pressure in this direction. This is called lift force, and it's what makes a ball curve or an airplane fly. So what do dimples on a golf ball have to do with the Magnus force? The dimples on a golf ball catch more air, sort of like the blades of a fan, and increase the amount of Magnus force. For a ball with backspin, the dimples give much greater lift. If Harrison hits a ball without dimples, its trajectory is going to look something like this. But a ball with dimples will hang in the air. It'll fly, and its trajectory will look something like this. The Magnus effect is same thing that makes a curve ball curve and a tennis ball react to top spin or back spin. So we know the Magnus effect works to curve the ball in the direction of its spin and the dimples magnify the effect. When a golf ball curves to the left, it's called a hook. When it curves to the right, it's called a slice. A hook is caused by a club hitting a ball at an angle like this, giving the ball a spin to the left. So it's got a hook to the left. A slice is caused by the club hitting a ball at this angle, spinning it to the right, and slicing it to the right. Here's a smooth golf ball, and here's a smooth golfer. How far would you say that went? That ball maybe flew. Uh, 110, 120 yards, it was very low and had no consistency. It was the weirdest flight pattern I've ever seen with the ball. Okay, so let's see what happens with dimpled ball. Okay. Now how far did that one go? That one probably flew uh, 270, 275, and that was a good straight flight. The ball got in the air. And and, uh, and stayed there almost as if it was flying on its own. Nice shot. Thank you. You're welcome. So this aerodynamic stuff really does work. So what would you say to a kid that wanted to be a professional golfer? Would you have any specific advice for them? 
I would just tell them to have fun. Uh, it, it, while it would be a job, it's still a game. You know, it's, uh, you have to go out there and try to be creative and, and show some imagination and show some personality on the golf course. So what did we learn? That a ball passing through the air encounters form drag from the wake. And that a rougher surface like dimples can actually reduce form drag, creating more turbulence. And that the dimples increase the lift force because they grab more air. Right, because of the Magnus effect, a spinning golf ball will curve in the direction of the spin. It works just like an airplane wing. Right, a golf ball is an aerodynamic masterpiece. Right, brothers? Right, brothers? Yeah. <sighs> I'd like to thank Harrison Fraser, our students, Elizabeth, Stephen, Andrew, and Michael, Eagle Quest, and the Royal Oak Country Club for helping us out with... Ooh, golf is a drag. See you later. <sighs> you can have this back now. Thanks for watching. The following program is part of Cable.